Hello, welcome to 7 Minutes with Sheila Singham. Today, my special guest is Datin Umayal Eswaran. She's the chairperson of Rhythm Foundation, which she set up with her husband, Datuk Sri Vijay Eswaran. Now, Rhythm, spelled R-Y-T-H-M, stands for Raise Yourself to Help Mankind, a truly wonderful philosophy. The foundation operates in a number of countries, carrying out projects that serve poor communities, youth, women, adolescent girls, and other marginalized segments of society. Welcome, Dati Nomayal, to our 7 Minutes program. Hi, Sheila. Thank you for this opportunity. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and your love for philanthropy. And how did it start? Growing up in Sri Lanka, in my house, my father welcomes everyone at any time who comes into my home. And always food is there in the house. As I grew, I, I realized, you know, the importance of welcoming people and, you know, being able to do the smallest thing possible and, and showing kindness and love to another human being is so very important, especially in this time and world. So that's where my love for wanting to help people began and uh, wanting to get involved in philanthropy. Rhythm Foundation is not something that we talked about it for a long time or we wanted to do something. So it, it just came about because as the company was formed, we said along with it, we wanted to help people right from the onset to mm. give back to society. And I just took it as my calling and I said that. And also I think it's it should be the natural part of who we are as human beings. Wanting to help one another. Wanting to lift one another in a positive way. Absolutely right. I totally agree with you. So basically it was kind of set up out of yours and your husband's desire to do more because it, it's sort of like the corporate social responsibility arm of, uh, of your parent company, the QI Group, right? Now, uh, Dutchin, uh, what activities did is your foundation conduct in good times? So we are kind of focusing on uh, three main areas at the moment. And one, we call it education for all and gender equality and sustainable community development. Okay. We are focusing more on sustainable programs as in like our programs are about one to three years long. And so we have just started um, all of the new programs now in 2019, which is going up to 2022, 14 to 15 programs all in all. And uh, we have four programs in Malaysia and we have about uh, 10 to 12 programs in different parts of the world, in Sri Lanka, in India, in Indonesia, in Africa. All of these programs fall under these three focus areas. So why we are focusing also on um, sustainable programs is because we have to put in a lot of effort and time in building our relationship on the ground. So we, we work with partners on the ground and so we are able to build our relationships with them and see that, you know, because we want to make a difference. We really want to make a difference in community that we go in and we work with. Mm. So that should be the, you know, the basic requirement or the, the approach of working with organizations because social responsibility shouldn't be just about giving funding and us walking away. Mm. So which is something I'm trying to emphasize to all the corporations and to NGOs mm. uh, is that don't just give funds and walk away because we really don't know whether the deserving communities really get the funding and mm. also get the help that they need. So we are very focused on sustainable programs. Yeah, so actually it's an end-to-end -end approach. You raise the funds, you send the people there, you work with partners on the ground who can help facilitate everything so that you really know that the, the funding that's being put in, the effort that's being put in is really going to generate the results for the communities. Now, during lockdown, how have things changed in the various countries where Rhythm operates? What, what's changed? So um, what's happening is all our partners, most of our partners are doing a lot of with CSR because mm. they're going on the ground and uh, this is when you have a lot of in different countries of course it's different sets of problems uh, but there's migrant workers you mm. have refugees you have daily wage earners then like in India for example as well you have big slums 
and they live from like basically day to day. So um, a lot of our partners on the ground have kind of stopped what they were doing and they went into the COVID mode, so to speak. So, um, you know, they are distributing masks, sanitizers, you know, whatever is necessary. Now, there is a one community in India, which is women, who are now kind of making masks on recycled materials, you know, so that they can sell. So it's kind of like a social entrepreneurship. These are various things that our partners are doing. And what we have done in Malaysia is also work with our local partners. And we have given like provisions because you do have here marginalized communities and you do have refugees and we do have migrants who basically don't have any other way of income when during the MCO. But it is very tough because with roadblocks and you know, which, which we cannot have contacts with humans. But you see, these people are starving. When our local partners go in with registered people who want food, and there's the number doubles because people start coming and begging and crying to be given permission. So, you know, the thing is, uh, Sheila, I think this is the time for basically Malaysians to come forward that I think and do whatever the best that they can. This is the time to come out and do their best, reach out to NGOs and there are, you know, organizations who are doing an excellent job on the ground and they are continuing to do it. I totally agree with you, Adatin. In, in, in your uh, opinion, Adatin, what are some of the things that companies can do? Let's start with small ways. Lah. I know we, we might have yes. big aspirations in good times, but now what are some of the things that people and organizations can be doing? I'm pretty sure a lot of Malaysian families can afford to give, let's say, about 140 or 150. Okay, 150 ringgit goes a long way. And sometimes it brings to mind the fact that you order a food grab delivery for 100 ringgit. You know, instead of doing that, you just take that money and you just buy provisions and send it send it to someone poor in an area near your house that you know about. And if you don't, as you say, they can partner with organizations like yours and other NGOs. Now, one of the things that, that I can, because I cannot recommend, okay, you can work with these other communities or these other, you know, organizations, but you can go into our website, which is this rhythmfoundation.org and look at organizations that we have working with. These are organizations that I can watch for because we are not just giving funding. We are following through with these organizations to make sure what are the communities that are receiving. So even in this time, crisis time, they still have to come back and give us reports. And I'm very sure they are going to come out of this crisis stronger than ever before. Thank you so much, Latin, for your insight and for sharing. It's really uplifting to know that corporations are, uh, like yours are still you know, out there giving and funding and helping people around the world. You've been listening to 7 Minutes with Sheila Singham with our special guest today, Datin Omeyaleswaran. Thank you for tuning in.